uh, Ladonia's kind of got reputation like uh, North Highland a little bit, right? Somewhat. Yeah. Um, you were saying just a second ago before I, I cut you off to do microphone tests, you you saying you used to live out Ladonia and something you had witnessed out there? Yeah, I was, I was there and a guy was standing next to me and he got shot point blank range in the face. Good grief, man. That's uh, what do you do in that situation? Like, get on out of there, right? Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, some of the stuff you guys have dealt with is almost like, you know, active duty military being in, you know, in hostile territory. The the amount of peers that you guys have lost, you know, to the streets or in jail, you know, it's a, uh, it's tragic, man. It's it's got to. F- I mean, it's, it's got to feel like a weight on you. I mean, like a, you know, if you were in the military, they'd call it PTSD, you know? Yeah, it's, it weighs on you. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, got a couple of awesome folks with me today. Um Y'all want to introduce yourselves to everybody? Tell them, uh, tell them your name. We got Billy and Taylor here, but I'm gonna let them tell you their name. And uh, I don't know what uh, something something you want to tell everybody about yourself, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit and get into your stories. But uh, your name, where you from? Um, anything else you think is real important? Go ahead. Um, Billy Burris. I'm from North Highland. Uh, I grew, you know, I grew up on the streets. Oh. Um, I just, you know, I just want everybody to hear my testimony. Yeah, yeah. cool, man. We've had some good stuff going on the last, uh, the last several uh, months, and um, one of the big parts of that is sitting next to you. You got your daughter here with you, yes, sir. So, uh, Taylor, you want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Taylor. Yeah. I'm from Columbus. I'm from a little bit of everywhere, but I've always called called North Highland my home. It's okay. just what I know. Yeah. And right off camera, below them and in between them, we got another guest who's down there. It's little Eli. Eli down there. That's <laughs> my grandbaby. He's uh he's snoozing right now, or is he awake? He's snoozing. He's All right. out. He's Good out. for him. Down for the count. He stayed yeah. awake through the whole service. You didn't hear him I, talking to you. A <laughs> <laughs> little bit, but he's all right. I um I got me just like this much of a nap. Just enough to shut my eyes and mm-hmm. start worrying about what time it was. So. I I worked all night last night. And I've been up. I'm, I'm about ready for a nap. Myself. Y'all uh y'all painting uh school right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir. y'all got to work at night. Yeah, yeah, on the weekends we do. Okay. Friday, Friday and Saturday we do. All right. And what school are you painting? Uh, right now Benning Hills Elementary. Yeah, that's right. You told me that. Okay. Taylor, what do you do? I'm a medical assistant. All right. Mm-hmm. And where do you work? Uh, Piedmont Urology, right okay. around the corner. All right. All right, well, cool. How long have you been doing that? I've been a medical assistant for about three or four years now, but I just got this job at Piedmont. Okay, awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, so um, I thought it'd be cool to uh, to have you come hang out. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you uh, agreed to come. Mm-hmm. And uh, Billy wanted to um, share some of his story, which I've got to got to hear just a little bits and pieces of it. And um, But uh, it's been good getting to know you guys over the last several months and um, see what God's doing in your life. And uh, so, yeah, um, y'all have had, uh, over the course of Taylor's life, you're 23, you said, right? So y'all have had a good bit of that time y'all spent separated, right? I mean, not been able to be together. Yes, sir. And that's really part of your story, Billy. I mean, you just yes, want to get into that a little bit? Well, I've I've been in prison most of her life, mm-hmm. and because of drugs. Yeah, and so uh, and I'm I'm glad to have her back in my life. It's, yeah, it's, it's a blessing. Yeah. So Taylor, uh, we'll get in all kinds of stuff, but I mean, um, most of your life is that kind of what you what you remember? Like what kind of what kind of daddy memories do you have? I mean, I over have the years? I have good ones too, yeah. but um. A lot of the time he was gone, like sometimes, you know, I had no clue where he was or if he was in prison, if he was dead, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but you know, he's always been, no matter what, my dad can never do no wrong until I got hit, you know, my teenage years. I had that teenage anger, right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I was angry for him for a little while, at him for a little while, yeah. I won't lie, but. Yeah. I've always 
been very forgiving. It aggravated some people, but towards him, you know, yeah, he's always been my dad. Yeah. Know? Now, is that just toward him? Or are you a pretty forgiving person anyway? I am to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, I have people, it's hard to get past certain things, but, you right. know, most of the time I am pretty for, for, forgiving. I know yeah. change happens over time. Yeah. It's, um, you know, the, the impact, uh, the importance of parents in our lives. I mean, there's, I, I tell people this, I, I try and help them understand it. And I, th- I, th- I think people kind of know it, but they don't n- really feel it and get it and apply it in their lives. But there's, there's no other human voice more important to you in your life than the voice of your father. Um, and, you know, sometimes mothers get offended by that, but, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it really is. There's something about the voice of a father in a child's life. And if it's positive, negative, or absent, all of those things are it's huge in the life of a child. And um, so, yeah, so, but you've got, um, I, I guess there are times when, uh, when Billy, you were, you were out and you, I mean, wh- how, what was y'all's interaction during that time? I mean, um, um, me and, well, my my mother and him didn't always have the best relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and for a while, anytime like he got out, she let him see me and stuff okay. like that. But the absence she could tell was kind of taking a toll on me. Yeah. So when I was about fifteen, then she was all like, "Cause I'd be crying, you know, like yeah. he disappeared, didn't know where he went." So after about that time, she's all like, "I, you know, I'm not trying to be that person, but I think it's best if you just cut it." Yeah. You know, because it was it was taking a toll on me because, like I said, in my eyes, even if it was something horrible, yeah. I'd always forgive him. I'd yeah. always, you know, let him, you know, back in and yeah. then something else would happen and it would crush me. And finally, she was all like, you know, for for your well-being, because I'm not going to lie, I was a sad teenager. It's just, yeah. 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 So for your well-being. Right. Yeah. You know, we just got to cut it. How much? I'm going to get to you. Let's tell you a story. But how, how much did... How much did you understand or know about what I was, was a very going? smart child. They thought they hit it, you know. Okay. He was at work. He was, you know, my mom tried to save me from the, the, the idea of your father actually being in jail or he's out mm-hmm. doing drugs or he's out doing what, you know, whatever he's doing. Right. But I listened. I was nosy. I knew, I knew what was going on. You know, yeah. I got in trouble in kindergarten for announcing to the whole class. My dad was in prison, so, you know. Um, but, oh. yeah. I hope you didn't get in too much trouble. No, <laughs> it was just, you know, we need to keep that on down. Like, you don't need to be telling everybody your dad's in prison. <laughs> but when I, when I was drugging and gangbanging and all that, I, I, I tried not, I, I didn't go around them because I, yeah. I didn't want to bring that life to them. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, it's a, it was a very dangerous life. And it, yeah. It was something I didn't, I didn't want her involved in. Yeah. Yeah, the... um. You know, I, I never lied to her about what, what you know, what it was, the drugs. And mm-hmm. So I never lied to her. I always told her the truth. Yeah. But, but, I'm, I, but I never would bring it around her. I'm mm-hmm. thankful for that, though, because now that I'm older, it sounds horrible. But I, I can spot out a drug addict, somebody who would be bad for me, or, or I can yeah. understand things more. I know it's rough, you know. Mm-hmm having to learn all that at such a young age. But at this point in my life, I realize it's a useful skill to be street smart. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you can point it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, uh, learning from somebody else's negative example is not always a bad thing. So you can learn what you need to let somebody else make the mistake. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, um, well, Billy, uh, talk to us about wherever you want to pick up on your story, man. Um, you grew up in there in North Highland, and, and I mean, what was your family life like there? Um, well, my mom, she, she, when I was a kid, she really didn't, she, she really didn't care, you know. So, you know, I done what I wanted to. I was out on the street selling drugs at at the age of twelve, thirteen. Really. And so how do, how does that start for a twelve, thirteen year old? Because I think. For you, like in the neighborhood you were in, it just seems like well, like everybody knew how that could happen. But for for a lot of folks growing up in different places, the the thought of twelve year olds starting to sell drugs is like how does how does that happen, right? Like so, I mean, it, it may seem so natural to you in the in the environment you grew up in, but I mean, how does how does that happen? Well, it was 
it was what I knew. Everybody yeah. around me did the yeah. grown ups. Every everybody, yeah. you know. So when when it when it comes time, that's I, I just I picked it up. Yeah. And, and do you learn how to survive? Right. Do you start by, you know, you buy a little and then resell it and then go from there? I mean, as as well, a kid that way. From from yeah, as a kid, yeah, I would I would buy. It. I guess the of, a little bit at a time and bag yeah. it up and resell it. Okay. Man. Yeah, and the I guess the other part I'd be wondering, like, was there somebody older than you who, you know, somehow recruited you to sell for them or is it was there anything like that? Yeah. I mean you mentioned gang life. It was was that part of your life? I know it was part of your life in, in prison. Um was I, there I didn't I didn't really we we had, in the neighborhood I grew up, we the whole the neighborhood, we all clicked together. All of us that grew up together, we 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 all worked together. Yeah. When then when I was seventeen when I went to prison, that's that's when the gang life started. Okay. Seventeen. Yes, sir. All right. What uh was that a uh, drug offense? Yes, sir. All my all my all my charges are drug offenses and gu- and guns. Okay. All right. And uh, so first time in jail or prison at seventeen. How how long were you? The first time I was in there for maybe three years. Then when when my mama died, I got I went out there. I, I got a fifteen year sentence, mm-hmm. and then on and on, and it just never stopped. Yeah. Every time I get out, I might stay out a week. Yeah. A month. Yeah. But every time, I, well, you know, every time you pick that sack up, that's what's gonna happen. Yeah. And that's what it, what it is. And I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. Was out. I got out before I got into this program. Wasn't out two days. Walked out the store. Police got me the same thing: a pistol and drugs. Yeah. Um. So you get out, hit the streets, find drugs and a gun. There, that's just that's just what you had to have in your pocket. I mean, that's a part of who you were, right? Yes, sir. Wow. Um, the uh, the different um, things that you you doing all right down there? You waking up a little bit? Yeah, you waking up? I, I quit making so much noise. I have to whisper. <laughs> Oh yeah, he's a good boy. Now you mentioned uh, you mentioned the program. You're you're in the Grace House now, right? Yes, sir. How's that going? Man, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's taught me a new way of life. Yeah. Now you um you talked about uh, your recovery. Talk to me about how addiction factors in to to your life over the you know these years. Um, I mean. I'd, yeah, I guess just just tell me about that and, and the transformation that's happening being in recovery now. When well, when when I was selling, you know, eventually I started using, started running around with people using, mm-hmm. started making it. Went to jail for making it. Went to prison for making it. That's what I caught the fifteen year sentence mm-hmm. for. And I'd turn around, I just never quit using. It. Every time I hit, even when I was in prison. There's more. There's more drugs in prison than there is on the streets. Yeah, and I never stopped. But I mean, like I said, I finally got sick and tired of being sick and tired mm-hmm. of it controlling my life. And yeah, um, it's meth, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, and so the Grace House and the Tomorrow's Hope is the program you're going through. Right? It saved my life. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, how long do you have clean at this point? Right now, I'm at nine months. Nine months. That's amazing, man. That's awesome. I think That's it's awesome. the longest. Yeah, it the is the longest. Is yeah. I haven't been clean none because I, I never I, up until up until I paid to get into this program. I never, I never wanted to quit. I didn't think there was any other life but that life. Right. But what? But I was I was in jail. They just got me. I just got a bunch of money, and 
they come at me with with a, a ten year sentence recidivist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I turned it down and went back to the dorm and I called a lawyer and I talked to the lawyer and I said, if you can guarantee me this program, he said, well, he said I'm gonna charge you three thousand dollars. I want a thousand now and so much a week. I said, well, what I really need is this program. I said, mm-hmm. oh, prison. It ain't gonna. It's not. If you look at my record, it's not gonna help. It's gonna. It's gonna send me the same. The same way. Mm-hmm. I said, but if you can get me this program, you can go down there and swipe my card right now and get you three thousand. Mm-hmm. And he come back the next day. He said, uh, Mister Burris. He said, I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. And but say I heard it when I was in. I was in jail. And I was. I was asleep, and I heard Pastor Chris come in there. He comes in there every Wednesday mm-hmm. and, and, and does a sermon and yeah. all and he was talking about the program. I got up and went out there and started listening to him. I ain't never really been in the church or anything until then. Mm-hmm. And when I got out, I, you know, he told me about the program and all that. Yeah. So they got me the program and since I've been out, it's it's been a blessing. Yeah. The, the program, the Grace House, this church, you know, I got baptized here. Yeah. You know, and hopefully it brought a lot of folks in. Yeah. Because there is a better way of life. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And I used to not think that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's uh it's a good thing to have hope, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um so many people think maybe look at somebody like you who lived their life a certain way and and think well, you know they must they must love it, right? And uh, uh, you know it's they're just it's just a product of their choices, and that's the life they've chosen. And and so much of it, you know, is you just started out one way and on that direction, and didn't know how to get how to go anywhere else, right? I mean, um, and now you got some folks showing you a different way, and uh, it's a good thing. I wouldn't so, trade it for nothing in the world. Yeah, man. Yeah. This is Taylor and this grandbaby. That's that's uh, that's good stuff, man. That's, that's all they've seen that I need, right there. Yeah, <laughs> make he me actually, want to live right, doesn't it? He came <laughs> around when I was about, I believe I was seven months pregnant with Eli. That's mm-hmm. when he finally like came back back into my life. Yeah, I'm a little skeptical at first, you know, because mm-hmm. everything we've been through. But you know, the first thing I said to him was like, "You have a grandbaby to live for now." Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's his. That's his everything right yeah. there. That's my little man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love seeing you carry him into church on Sundays. So. Um, now you have you have other children. Yes, sir, I do. Mm-hmm. And still working on those relationships, right? Yes, sir. I'm, I, I I talked to my son the other day. Uh, I guess he, we gonna try to work it out, and then I got, I got a daughter in California. Mm-hmm. I got, I got another son here mm-hmm. that I have. I haven't spoke to him, and I got, I have a few more kids. Yeah. And they, you know, I, I ain't never been there for not, yeah. not, not in their life like I have hers. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah, it's um, it's a, it's a difficult thing. Um, all right. But I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad what's working out for you guys. It's uh, it's beautiful. It really is. It's uh, it's fun to watch from the outside. And I, I, it's got to be an amazing experience uh, from the inside. So. God's good. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, um, things that you know, folks are probably um, curious about, and I know you want to talk about. Uh, don't ever want to celebrate anything bad, or you know, but. I think folks are curious, you know, you talk about um, going in and out and kind of being engaged in the same things for, for a lot of folks, they would wonder like, how do you maintain connection? How do you get back out and immediately back into business? That kind of thing. How, how are those? Because my name carried a lot of weight on the street. Yeah. They knew that I was, I was, a, I was a moneymaker. Yeah. 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 Even though I used, I still, I made, you know, yeah. 
whoever whoever gave me the product, I made I made them I made them rich. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I helped buy the new cars and the new clothes and all that they, yeah. they was wearing. So I had no problem getting it. They would come to they would come to me as soon as I get as soon as I get out. They come to me. Right here. What? What's the? I guess the. the um, what's the difference between, you know, somebody who's a on the street, a good money maker, and somebody not? I mean, I, I know somebody who's using up all the product is not right, but yeah. I mean, what else is? What else defines somebody who's a, you know, well, what makes a good money maker? Your word. Do it. Your word. Your word. How's that? If you're only as good as your word is. Okay. You know, if you don't stand by what you, what you say, mm-hmm. then you're no good. Yeah. Yeah. And that's to that's to the people that are that to you're working any, for, and any, the people to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, your your street credibility when you're in that is it's all you got. Yeah. And when I when I was in it, I would. You know, I know I took a lot away from the neighborhood, but I gave back a lot to the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. The street credibility can be a hard thing to maintain. I mean, I, sometimes you gotta you gotta be engaged in stuff that you gotta is do, do things that you you don't normally want to do, but you yeah. gotta do it to keep. If you let somebody want some one person get away with it, somebody else is gonna want to do it. Yeah. So you gotta make an example. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. Uh, um, becomes a a cycle you gotta you gotta maintain right yeah um and that's probably similar in jail and prison as well right yeah yeah um well now uh taylor what um what are you hoping (coughs) and dreaming for for uh for your baby for your boy and any and everything we can accomplish yeah i want him to have a lot better. I'm not saying my childhood was horrible. My mom did an amazing job. Yeah. But, you know, I want him to accomplish so much more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I got lucky. You know, he has an amazing dad. And, yeah. you know, we work really well together. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, and Billy, you got an opportunity to, uh, for, for this little guy to never know anything but you know, Nothing Billy on the right side of the law, right. you know? That's right. The so, days are over with. So, uh, you know, what you got them tattoos for, Dad? Oh, that's a that's another life, right? That's a, yes, uh, something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, granddaddy. What's he called? What, what are you, you going to have him call you? Paul Paul. Paul Paul. Paul Paul. Paul Paul. All right. That's Paul Paul's boy. <laughs> I like it. I like it. He loves him some Paul Paul, too. Yeah, He's that's crazy. good. That's good. How old is he? He is almost five months old. He'll five be five months, months old at okay. the end of this month. Mm. He was born on Halloween. Yeah. Awesome. What other uh what other good things are you seeing out of these last nine months? I mean, just within yourself and, and the way you interact with other folks. What and other just, kind of things? And just the whole new way of life. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, I love it. It's you know, I I n I never seen this side of life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always been the other side. Yeah. And you know what? I wouldn't trade it for nothing in yeah. the world. It's, That's it's good. awesome. That's good. It, it is awesome. Have you, have you experienced any growing pains out of it? Like, um, you know, because you've known one way of life for so long. I think I asked you this the other day. you kind of known one way of life, one way of making money, one way of getting through, you know, for so long. And now, you know, to uh, get up in the morning – you know, put your boots on and go to work, like, you know, which um, and I know the work you're doing before wasn't necessarily easy, but, you know, paint schools all night. Not not what you were used to, the lifestyle you were used to doing. I mean, how how is that adjustment going for you? Oh, man, I love it. I got good. a good job. I got a good boss. Good. Good. It's, 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 man, it's, it's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. yeah I'm uh, finding – Finding a good satisfaction and in, in a you know job well done and and having a good job it's a it's a good thing I think it's it's probably something that you had to you, your mind had to shift on to yeah. to get there too right so yeah. well um what's uh what's um what's something you would want 
you know, because there's got to be there's got to be young men out there who you know, right? I mean, who know you who you are. You know, they may run across something like this and say, well, is "That Billy sitting there, you know, on the church's thing." And well, hopefully, you know. it'll bring people in like my like my baptism did. Yeah, because my baptism brought in a lot of people. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully, this will too. Yeah. What would you What would you want to communicate to those guys? I mean, to get them to to shift and change their thinking earlier than than you did. What What would you What would you want to tell them? There is a, There is a better way of life. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to do that. Yeah. There's there's a way better way of life. Yeah. And there's and there's folks willing to help you. Yes, a lot of people. A lot of people is willing to help. I, I like, think that's what a lot of people myself, don't. John Burso, <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot a lot of people. People mm-hmm. at the Grace House, yeah. Chap. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people that yeah. want to help. And I'm I'm in the process of trying to go and get my CPS license. I want to be a drug counselor for, but I want to do it for little young kids, keep them off drugs, yeah. and keep them out of gangs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can give back. Yeah, it it'd be great if if folks could could understand that there's, you know, I don't be silly about this, but I mean, you know, they're finding support and help. They think it's going to be in the gang, or in the street, and there really is. I mean, even as hard as that life is, as much as they may think, I want something better, I want something different. But they don't know that there's a way out. There really is a way, right? I mean, yes, there's a there, way to yes, to change yes, your heart yes. and thinking through Jesus there's Christ. There's people who want to give you a hand. A lot of people get in get into the gangs and stuff like that <clears throat> because a fan. It's like like fam, like having a family. Right. You know, a lot of people, the kids that don't that grow up, and mm-hmm. don't have family. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, they and they show them things and shit. You know, and show them the fast money and all that. That's, you know, that's normally what it is. Kids yeah. that don't have have family, yeah. right? And uh, but there really is there really is a group of people. There's a lot of people out there who who are willing to help, even people they don't know, people. right? A lot of people. I mean, have you you've experienced? I, yeah. I would guess. Uh, I, mean, I have. Uh, there there are some wonderful people out there that I, I never knew there was people out there like that to help, but right. they are. They really are. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that we can really do for those who are who are out there is really help them understand. I think people from your perspective are, are in a good position to help people understand. Like, no, 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 I, there really are there really are programs that really do help. Yes. They're not trying to get anything from you, not trying to take anything from you. That's right. All they want to do is pour in and help you that's and right. lift you up. And that's, right. that's uh, um you know, I think trying to figure out ways to to help people to get that message to people is uh is a good thing, and I think you know this can help the way you know when when well, you I share. I really hope it does. Yeah, when I you really share do. this with folks, and um and we know that uh, recovery is is a difficult thing. I mean, it's a it's a daily. Well, thing. Listen, nobody said it was going to be easy. Yeah, because it's not easy. Yeah, but to me, recovery is everything, bro. Right. Come and, before everything, and yeah. I hate to say it, even before them. Well, it's my recovery is before that, before everything. Yeah. Well, it's, it's got to because you don't have that, you don't have them in your life, right? That's right. So it's it's got to be first right now, um, and uh, and so are you finding tools in your program and the people that surround you that like if you know when the when the temptation comes and when the struggles come, I mean, are you finding the tools that you need, like you, you oh, know, yeah. I'm, I, oh, yeah. I know where to turn to. I know yes, where to get sir. the help. Yeah, I got man, I got a, a awesome support system. Good, and and the tools. You know, I, I don't even have the urge to use drugs no more. Yeah, I don't. And you know, it's, it's, I know it's probably hard to believe, but I, I don't. Yeah. I don't have. I have no urge, but I do have a wonderful support system. Um, meetings. I, you know, I try to do service work when I can. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Like I said, um, Ginger, Jeff House, mm-hmm. John Burshaw, Christy Burshaw, all mm-hmm. of them, they're, one, they're wonderful people. And anytime you need help, they're there for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a really cool thing to, to watch uh, this community of folks. It's such a passion to, to really help people. And the, the links that they'll go to, 
um, are are pretty amazing. It is, uh, you know. I, I I've never seen such a group of people that um, they understand that they can't make anybody do anything. You know, like when somebody's determined they're going to use, you know, you, you, you just gotta, can't. You got to want it. Yeah, yeah. But when somebody when somebody wants it, the boy they'll do. And well, they'll go above and beyond. Yeah, yeah. And so, and that'll be a big part of you know who you are in the future and in yes, your sir. recovery, you know, and, yes, and I going through this drug counselor uh, certification. That'll be cool, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, to be uh, so much of us um, growing is uh, is being able to help other people. You know, that's, that's Christianity, right? I mean, yes, well, us, you know, Jesus says, "Go and make disciples." Really, what he's saying is, "Go and do for other people what I've done for you." You know, right. teach them, show them the way. Right, and as we do that, I mean, our helping others is part of our walk, is part of our faith, is part of our recovery. Yes. And so there'll be a, a time that as you get stronger and stronger, you you'll be in better and better position to not just be a good example for this little guy, but um, uh, for okay. yeah. for lots of guys. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, ho- I hope this brings a lot yeah. a lot of people in, just like my just like my baptism did. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So what do you um? What are you dreaming and hoping for 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 your future? Well, like I said, I want to be I want to be a drug counselor mm-hmm. for for young kids. Yeah, yeah. To help keep you know help keep them off drugs, yeah. keep them out of gangs. Yeah, you know somebody that's been there that knows. Right. You know, maybe maybe they'll listen. Yeah. Because it, it ain't it ain't it ain't a way of life. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want you know be able to establish. A good, a good, solid relationship with my family. Yeah, my sister, my two nieces, mm-hmm. my baby, yeah. my other kids. Yeah, nieces or something else. Those, uh, um, you have to remind me of her Akira name. And Akira and TJ. Say, say it one more time. Akira and TJ. Akira is. I'm never gonna get that right because I didn't get it <laughs> right the yeah, first it's time. It's a very rare name. Akira <laughs> and all right. TJ. TJ. TJ Akira, she is bubbly and happy, and yeah. So is TJ. Oh, you have not yeah. seen Trinity TJ. Is too. Her yeah. name's Trinity. Yeah, her name's college. Trinity. Her nickname's TJ. I've I've seen her. I met her, but uh, I had uh, Akira's just like she's just mm-hmm. excited. Oh, they, yeah, they, we they, told her they both love their uncle Bill Ray. Yeah. <laughs> we told her TJ about the baptism. The way mm-hmm. she says baptized should be, I want to get baptized. Yeah. So she really wants to too. Yeah. yeah. She loves coming to church too. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. They're sweet. Well, that's really cool, man. I'm I'm excited for you guys as a family. I'm excited to see all that God's uh, going to continue to do in your life. And um, oh, got to get his bottle. Yeah. Well, he didn't sign on for all this. We've been going for about thirty minutes. He's probably ready to be done. So, um, but uh, but before um, before I let you go, I want you to know, man, I'm. You you regularly in my prayers, thinking about you guys all the time. I really am, and um, and I, I give thanks to God for what's going on. And I just I ask Him regularly for for you guys to just just hold you tight. You know, use use His uh, you know for Him to protect you, watch over you, and, uh, and keep you where you are. Because um, uh, well, well, without y'all guys, this it, this wouldn't be possible. Man, it's uh it's. I, I love um, I love the church. I love you know not just our church, but I mean I love I love church family. You know us, us doing this together, and so um, yeah, I'm I'm praying for you. I'm I'm loving watching you do well, man. And uh, yeah, anything anything you need from me, brother, you got it. You lot. too, Taylor. Um, he um, uh, I wasn't a church goer before this. I really uh, wasn't. Really, none at all. Wow, Neither I, you know, I just I didn't grow up in a really religious family. I was never, you know, it was just never a big part of life. And then his baptism is what made me start going here every day. Yeah, wow. You know, so I would have I would have guessed different, okay? Mm-hmm. Because you came in and from immediately were so joyful and receptive to everything, you know. Because I'm I'm watching everybody. I'm watching who's falling asleep and yeah. you know and who's checking their watch and going hurry up, preacher, you know, but. You um you came in so joyful and so receptive and I love it. It's, good. It's you know sometimes we'll be you know they'll be singing and I'll be singing too and it's like yeah. you just you think about it and you think yeah. about how far you came and you just kind of want to cry a little bit you know yeah. it's just it's yeah. a great feeling honestly. 
Awesome. I do every time I come in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I, awesome. Love, I love this church. I feel something every time I come in here. Mm-hmm. Awesome. I feel the spirit. Yeah. God's good. Mm-hmm. God's good. Yeah. Yeah. And he's got lots of good stuff in store for you guys. I'm um I'm thankful and uh and just just proud of what's happening in y'all's lives. And uh yeah, it's really cool. So I uh, I appreciate y'all uh watching and uh, I know there's lots of lots of good stuff coming um in in life for for so many of you that are watching and uh and maybe you're struggling right now with the kind of things that, that Billy uh, has struggled with and gone through in the past. You don't know that there's a better way. There really is help for you. Please contact us. Holler at us. Um, you, can, you can click our Facebook message or you can, uh, you can contact me at the church. Um, and uh, there's maybe folks like you who are in Taylor's position and uh, you've, you've suffered through disappointments in life. And um, But there really is, there still is good things to hope for out there. And maybe you got broken relationships, and these two are a great example of how reconciliation can come by the power of God. And so, um, so I want to encourage you today um, to reach out for help. There's help for you, and we'd love to help you here at the Ford. So, thank you guys for coming in. Appreciate it so much, and uh, we will uh, we'll say goodbye to everybody, and we'll uh, we'll talk to y'all next time. Bye.